woman complains of vaginal bleeding after a marital relationship, sexual intercourse. After shaking the hand of the patient and introducing yourself, you are going to start discussing the problem of the patient. So you will ask the patient's name and how old is she and what is her nationality and what her social status is married or divorced or widow. If she has pregnancy before, we should know how many and the outcome of this pregnancy and if she was using a method of contraception or not, and what is her blood group, and what is her RH typing, and what is her job, and where she live, and she is smoking or alcohol intake, or smoker and taking narcotics. If she is smoking, we have to ask about how many cigarettes per day, and for how many she is smoking months or years. The patient who can notice bleeding after sexual intercourse when the bleeding starts today or several days, or several months or several years, and when is her last menstrual date and how much she is bleeding after sexual intercourse. She's uh, drops or clots or continuous bleeding for how many days she's bleeding and for bleeding is only after six or also without six. If there is any pain and discomfort during six or not, course or not. While about the menstrual history, the age of mark when she has the first period and when she has last period and as the cycle is regular, uh, regular, if the cycle is regular, we are going to ask the length of the cycles and for how many days and the amount of bleeding and how many napkins she is using and this pain of discomfort. If the cycle is regular, we are going to ask about length of the cycle and uh, for how many days bleeding and how many napkins she is changing per day and uh, bleeding is stained or soil or soaked. There's any way change or there's acne separate or there's hair on the face or mm, chin or there's milk discharge from the breast. This, she has uh, any premenstrual syndrome, there is uh, mood change or headache or abdominal distension or there is bleeding after sex. If she has tiredness and uh, fatigue and dyspnea due to anemia. If she is more than 50 years old, when she has the last period, at what age? She has hot flushes or night sweats. She has you know, symptoms. She has abdominal distension. She has fatigue and vaginal dryness. She has uh, did any cervical smears or not? And what is the result of the cervical smears? Uh, and she is did it severe or serious and what is the result of the smear? Mm, normal cervical cells, squamous cells with undetermined significance of squamous interplesia, typical glandular cells of squamous cell cancer. If she has vaginal discharge, uh, what is the color of this discharge? And what is the consistency of the consistency of this blood charge? It's milky, mucoid, watery, mucoid, blood, urine. And what is the smell of this discharge? 
offensive officials or, or UN spans. There is increase in frequency of fluctuation or, uh, and there is any pain or discomfort during fluctuations, disorder, burning, dyspepsy. There is any urinary incontinence, always continence, social incontinence, paradoxical incontinence. And what is about the weight loss? There is weight loss or not? And she has a previous history of heart lesions, human problem virus, or uh, has any vaginal swelling or not? She has bleeding from the gums or nose. She has blue discoloration of the skin. Oh, she has. Verbal corruptions. She has past history of fever, hepatitis, disease, renal disease, heart disease. She has using medication, drug for control of diabetes, so renal heart disease, allergies, she has allergy or not. And she has the family history of consanguinity, and hypertension of diabetes, and family history of similar problems, bleeding, and sanctions of vision. Then we are going to examine the patients. Or cachexic or toxic and the pulse rate and the blood pressure and temperature and the respiratory rate and the blood of GH jaundice. And then we go to the abdominal examinations. Normally, in the majority of the cases, we will not find any normality in the abdomen, but sometimes we see abdominal enlargement and we uh, see that the uterus is enlarged or there is a vein swelling and the, the line are free, painless, or there is swelling on the line. On the vaginal examination, we will find that the patient has bleeding or not, and there is vaginal discharge, blood discharge, or offensive discharge. And we put speak lamp examination, we will find normal cervix or sediment that the eyes, the cervical the cervical erosion, cervical polyp, the cervical polyp, the cervical polyp, the cervical cancer, cervical cancer cervix, cauliflower mass, or uterine polyp. And we examine digital examination cervix. Firm or the soft and internal ossos open, cervical body, butyne, body, comic cervical canal, or the trunk bank, out of the cervix or cervical ulcer, cervical mass localized to the cervix or cervical mass extends to the vagina, or sediment that binds the vice. And we evaluate the size of the uterus, is it normal or large and painful or tender, and the adnexa are normal or there's tenderness or the Douglas pouch is free or the and swelling or fibroid. And then at the end of the uh, examination we can determine that the cause of both cortical vaginal bleeding is due to apparent cervical lesions or there is normal cervix and we have to look for the cause of the post vaginal bleeding other than the cervical lesion.